It's total production from the day the animal is born until somebody has a beef steak on their plate, the center of the plate. As a checkoff program, the Beef Quality Assurance Program has had tremendous value. I see a much, much greater emphasis on the quality of the product that we're producing. The Quality Assurance Program, as we know it today, uh, got its original start or original conception in 1986. When we first started this, it started off as a beef safety assurance, mainly just looking at drug residues. Wes Bonner of Texas, Don Williams of Oklahoma, and myself were all committee chairmen. So we started proposing the program through committee structure and it, it received such a good voice from the cattlemen. They all agreed that we needed to do something. When they studied them, went all through the, the industry, the retailers, uh, food uh, institute, regulatory people, and et cetera. In 1987 then, they made their report. This issue was not gonna go away. And it probably would continue to, um, in essence, haunt the beef industry we didn't, if we didn't develop some type of a program or some type of an action that address these issues at the farm and ranch level uh, for the consumer's sake. So in essence, that is the start of the beef safety program, which then matured into the quality assurance program as we have it today. In June of 89, the Alar apple thing broke, which was a chemical residue on apples, and it got major, major uh, public press at that time, Dr. Bob Joshram was president of NCA, and his point was, we've got to get some, some wheels under this program. It's apples now, but it may be beef down the road. I was asked by the American Meat Institute to come back to the East Coast and uh, uh, attend a meeting. They arranged for me to go meet uh, the president of King Super Grocery Markets in New Jersey. Uh, we discovered this issue that some of the pharmaceuticals we're using, some of the vitamins, some of the uh, antibiotics that were going intermuscular uh, were actually causing abscesses in the round. Gary Smith set up uh, a program with his uh, grad students to go around to packing houses and the first big survey they did uh, discovered that some 21 or 22 percent of the rounds that were coming through those packing houses had these abscesses in the rounds. The economic damage that had been done to the cattle industry because of this high percentage of, uh, of damaged rounds uh, was uncountable. But uh, after a few short years, we were able to point out that that, that incidence level now is under 5%. The first quality audit wasn't coincidental that it, it associated with the first injection site information that we had. And, and, and they went out not just to look for injection sites, but to look at all the things that impacted quality. And what we're really talking about is impacted the value of the product we raise. And it became obvious then that we needed to, to see what was causing this and address this issue. And so we did, and we got some data to confirm the fact that what was causing this. Then we were able to go out to producers with some hard facts about this is what's happening. This is what we mean about quality assurance. This is what we mean about even though it wasn't a safety issue that this is some things that's happened at your, your location that has affected the quality of our product and affecting the image of our product. I got involved with the Beef Quality Assurance Program back in the early 1990s when we recognized that there were some production practices which really detracted from the quality of beef that we were producing. It looked like these were fixable and I like the approach in that we would define the problem, then we would look for the cause of the problem look for solutions for the problem, and then educate our producers about how we could fix it. The National could only do so much. The real hard work and the real working with the producers had to occur and needed to occur at the state level. And uh, so it was very imperative that uh, the program develop and build a network, network of national uh, staff, the network of state staff, the network of extension veterinarians and veterinarians and extension staff and producers in the industry 
to all work together so we had continuity in the program no matter where a producer was to get his training. So I think the network is really what held this together. We have an effective program with the Quality Assurance Advisory Board, state coordinators, and, but you know what? The California, or the uh, Canadian cattle feeders, their quality assurance program modeled their, their program basically after ours. I believe the swine industry modeled their program basically after ours. I think the Australian model modeled their program basically after ours. And so we're recognized as an effective group and that this structure um, has been very beneficial in, in, uh, through the years and um, therefore we're looked up to and they've modeled their programs after us. In 1986, we said that if you had a bad experience eating a steak, that 10 of your friends would know about it. What is that number today? Well, it's something over 100, because if you Twitter it, or you put it on your Facebook, or you put it in an email, or you send it out in a camera photo of a tough steak, maybe hundreds or thousands of people now know that you had a bad experience. And so we have to be even more vigilant today. We have to make sure that the percentage of any product that doesn't fit the consumer's needs is so minuscule that when it does occur, we don't just go out and offend everybody who happens to be on a, on a social networking system. All those individuals that we've had a chance to work with, uh, very simply, I thank them all, because they made such a con huge contribution to this program and, and made it what it is today and I look forward to the new individuals coming forth you know years to come and taking this program to a brand new level. As we have beef consumption and demand like we have it today uh, it you know that you did the right thing you know that working in quality and trying to attain a quality product was the answer. It was the way we survive as an industry. And we will continue to have challenges. We will continue to find new ways to do better. We'll continue to find new technology that make us better. And we'll keep growing that quality bar. And the people who work in it will find it is the most rewarding thing they've ever done.